It's a recurring theme in the teachings of the Ajahns that the skills you learn while you meditate are for use not only while you're sitting here with your eyes closed, but as you go through life. And they're also for use when you die. The skills you have in learning to keep the mind in one spot, to peel it away from distractions, will be extremely useful at that point. But the word skill here means not only techniques, but also attitudes, qualities of your character. These get developed in the meditation, and they'll be useful at that time as well. In terms of techniques, as the Buddha said, you want to learn how to see things as separate. We've heard so much about wisdom being seeing the oneness or the interconnectedness of all things. But the Buddha himself actually said wisdom lies in seeing things as separate. Your awareness is one thing, the breath is something else. Other thoughts coming into the mind are something else. And it's good to be able to see those distinctions. In the beginning, though, as you work with the breath, you want to get the breath and your awareness together to the point where they seem to be one and the same thing. But you do want to see your distractions as separate, realizing that they're like a different world. You go into them and you've lost your body, you've lost your reference to the breath. And it's a different world with different values. And as you're sitting here meditating, it may not seem all that serious that your mind is wandering off. But when you die, you don't want your mind wandering around aimlessly. You want to keep it focused. You want to keep it, as they say, with the program. In other words, you want to keep it in line with your intentions, that you want to die well. And so you focus it on the breath. There will come a point, though, where it's very difficult to stay with the breath as the breath gets more labored and more difficult. This is why, as you're working with your meditation here, you eventually want to get to the point where the breath is still and you begin to see that your sense of the body is something that you put together. It's a construct. It's a fabrication where your awareness is something else. If you can get the mind still to the point where the breath energies in the body seem still, you'll want to notice that the sense of the boundary of the body that distinguishes what where the body ends and the space outside begins, where that boundary begins to dissolve away. And you're left with what feels like a cloud of little sensation dots arising and passing away, arising, passing away. So you learn how to stay with that cloud for a while. And then you begin to notice that between the sensation dots there's space. Focus on that space. Forget about any perceptions you have about the body and there's just space and begin to realize that space doesn't have any boundaries. If you stay with it long enough, and it's solid enough, that perception of space, then you can turn to look at what is the awareness that's aware of space. That's something else. That's what you want to be aware of as you die, just that sense of awareness that, that's not fabricating any thoughts. That's not even fabricating a sense of the body. There may be pains coming and going, but you don't have to turn those pains into a sense, well, this is my body in pain right now. They're just pains, but you want to learn how to see them as separate. This is why we talk so much in the meditation, not only separating yourself from distractions, but also separating yourself from pains, or separating your awareness from pains. So the pain can be there, but you're not sucked into the pain. 
this will be an extremely useful skill. Because those are the two things that cause the most trouble in meditation, but they're also the two things that will cause the most trouble as you're about to leave the body. You latch onto the pains, there's going to be a sense of desperation, a sense of being threatened, a sense that you can't stand this any longer. But that's because of the perceptions you have around the pain. You want to learn how to change those perceptions. Question the perceptions you have around the pain so you can begin to see. You're actually putting together the sensation of pain from some raw materials that are there. But you can leave those raw materials alone. That's when the pain begins to separate out. You can be simply with the awareness. And as you're more aware like this, then you can direct your mind where you want it to go. Certain options will open up at that time. In some cases they'll come as visions, where you see another place where you could go. And if you're feeling that you're being pushed out of the body, you'll jump to whatever appears. But if you realize, okay, your sense of the body is something that's falling apart, but it, you've been used to taking this perception of the body apart, so you don't feel quite so threatened, you don't feel quite so disoriented. You've learned how to see the body as one thing, your awareness is something else. Then you're going to feel less threatened and less pushed out of the body. And you'll have some choice as to where you want to go. And this will depend on your past karma, but will also depend on your attitude. This is where the question of your character comes in, the character that we develop as we meditate. There are three qualities the Buddha talks about as the ones that led to his awakening. And there's the same three qualities that are often mentioned with regard to monks who've listened to the Buddha's teachings and they go off and practice. The three qualities are heedfulness, resolution, and ardency. Even this is realizing that your actions have consequences, and the choices you make will make a difference. Sometimes heedfulness sounds scary. You have to be aware, wary of dangers. But it's also talking about opportunities. If your actions didn't make a difference, there would be nothing but bad, bad, bad. But your actions will make a difference, so it means that there are good things that you can bring about through the way you think, the way you act, the way you talk. And so it's good to remember that death is not the end. There's going to be something that follows on death. So you want to be heedful where you focus your attention, where you focus your desires at that point. This quality of heedfulness is something we try to develop in the meditation. As the Buddha said, all skillful qualities are rooted in heedfulness. I guess it's when you realize that your actions really will make a difference, that you put more attention into trying to make sure that they are skillful. This should be a quality that we develop as we meditate. Resolution is a quality that you have to develop in the face of adversity, in the face of difficulties. And this too is an important part of the meditation, and it will be very important as the body's beginning to fall apart. The parts that used to work are not working any well, anymore. And the mind is in the midst of a lot of very confusing and unfamiliar physical sensations. You have to make sure that you are not scared of these things. Don't feel threatened. And don't feel weak in the face of them. You made up your mind. You're going to stay with the breath. You're going to stay with your sense of space, to stay with the sense of awareness. And be prepared for the fact that there will 
be difficulties. It's like going through a storm. You be prepared, prepared for the fact that the wind will blow you around a little bit, but you're going to try to stand fast, stand solidly. As we're working on the meditation, we read in the books that the steps of meditation go one, two, three, four, five, very smoothly. But anybody who's tried realizes, okay, there are going to be difficulties. We occasionally read of Ajans or people in the canon who very quickly, without much effort, were able to attain awakening. But those are the exceptions. For all the rest of us, it's going to require that we face difficulties and not be afraid of them, not be discouraged by them. Be prepared. And the big difficulties, in some cases, when you're dying, the difficulties coming from outside, relatives, friends, who are quite upset. But you can't let their attitude affect your mind. And then, of course, the, the mind's own thoughts that are running out of control. Things you simply have to say, I've got to let that go. I can't identify with that. I can't let that have an influence on me. And you learn how to stand fast. And ardency is the effort to do this well. While we're meditating, don't believe the people who say there is no such thing as a good or bad meditation. There are good or bad meditations. And you want your meditation to be good, and it's going to depend on your skill. The effort you put in, the discernment you put in, all the good qualities that are needed, the mindfulness, concentration, conviction, all those strengths that the Buddha talks about. You want to develop those strengths, and you want to see that it's worthwhile. If you believe that death is the end, then, then why bother? But if you realize there is such a thing as a good death and there's such a thing as a bad death and you want it to be good, that's ardency. Because when death comes, it doesn't come with an, a notice ahead of time. It will come as a surprise. You're realizing suddenly you can't stay here any longer. So you always have to be ready. When the surprise comes, well, I've been meditating for the sake of this, drop everything else to do this well. The Buddha has an image of a person with his head on fire. And as he says, you put all your ardency and resolution and relentless, relentlessness and mindfulness into putting the fire out as quickly as possible. What's well, the same way? When the body's dying, it's like a house on fire. And although you can't put that fire out, you want to put out the fires of greed, aversion, and delusion. You want to put out your confusion. You want to do this well. So a time like that, you drop all your other thoughts, your concerns about other people, your concerns about your future, your regrets about the past. And see here, I've been meditating all this time. Here's the test. And you want yourself to be as we say in English, up for the test. In other words, you encourage yourself, okay, now is the time to do it well. And try to carry it through. So dying well is a combination of techniques that you learn in meditation. It's also a combination of qualities of the mind, qualities of the heart that you develop through meditation. And as we meditate on the breath, it means that we have these things associated with the breath. So as you begin to realize that the end is near, the breath will be right there. And hopefully you'll have these associations with the breath. The skills you'll learn about separating things out, the attitudes you'll learn about being heedful, resolute, ardent. You want all of them to come gathering together to help you. And if you develop them now, you'll have a good chance that they'll be there. 